I'm Alan Davis. I'm here with Stephen Lawler. I'm the art intern here in uh, IT Carlo. And uh, one of Stephen's works is hanging in the LRC and it's Ilium. Uh, it's an etching. Um, Stephen, can you talk a little bit about Ilium and the inspiration behind that image? And am I pr pronouncing the uh, title correctly? <laughs> you, you are pronouncing the title correctly. Ilium is the Greek name for Troy. What yeah. we call Troy, the Greeks called Ilium, and oh, yeah. um, hence the Iliad. But um, the Trojans um, were horse people. So on their shields, you'll see it in the cinema. On the shields, on their shields, there are horses' heads. That was the emblem of the city or the, the you know the, the city state. So um, they were horse people, as 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 the Irish are horse people. So I, I kind of felt that connection was great. Um, you know, be between them and ourselves. Um, there's, all, there's also um, mythology that, that, um, that follows what happens after the Trojan Wars and, and the destruction of the city. Um, they, they claim that, that the remnants of, of the Trojan um, aristocracy and, and army can, you know, basically fanned out in different directions, but the, the, there, is, there is some evidence of them uh, founding new cities along the North African coast um, and even landing on the Italian coast and founding places because wherewithal to do that. And, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know enough historically about it, but that's, that's, that's as far as I've read about what happened to them afterwards. But Ilium, I don't know, there's something, there's something magical about, about the idea of, of a horse people. Within the image of Ilium itself, um, <laughs> It does conjure up that this is not just a figure of a horse, but there, there's, no. there's, there's something else going on there as well. Yeah, I mean, th there is that symbiotic relationship between humans and horses, too, that 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 is timeless. It goes back so far in, in time and, in fact, brought on the human race um, beyond, you know, it's um, I suppose it's speeded up our development because we could move faster. You know, it, it connected people. Um, being able to, to move swiftly on horseback. But, yes, um, and, and especially the, the horse is a, a beast of burden as well. And, and, and you had absolutely. like, uh, po possibly back then, I, I wonder, would, would there have been um, sports and, and races with the horses? And oh, I'm sure there were. And chariot sure races were, yeah. and, and, and just bareback races. You see them, you see them in amphitheaters everywhere, all over Greece. What am I trying to say? Yes, and I, so I suppose there is something classical about specifically that print, um, where and there's a sort of a misty fog of um, of something behind them. I, I it's a quite an old print. I don't remember it exactly, but um, I do remember. So, so you asked the question about not only what it was about and creating that sort of uh, mythological atmosphere, as well as the the sort of classical. Um, uh, you know, attitude of, of the two the two yeah. horses in it. It's quite funny how two figures, even two human figures, will do that. Um, they they don't con they don't contend for space within a within an image, but they certainly work off each other. Something strange happens when you present more than one figure. But anyway, um, they yeah, I, I was very happy with that print. So I would there's four plates first of all with most of my prints. So I would have the master plate is the, is always the darkest plate with all the the lines and let's say you know, the density of, of, of the final image. The other three plates are colors underneath that will come, that you allow to come through where you want them to come through and obviously not where you want them to come through. So you're, you're controlling. So, uh, yeah, so I was just about to say there, there's, a, there's an element of control to the work. Uh, absolutely, you're controlling tone no. and color. So um, I, as time went on, I got more proficient at doing that in terms of painting acidon. So the acid will bite the aquatint. So I paint, you know, 100% strength acid, uh, ferric chloride, actually, not, not really acid, but it's a corrosive. Uh, I think this leads to my second question, actually, yeah. uh, which is um, the image seems to be layered. Um, and, yeah. And does this, does this process then making an image like Ilium, uh, would it involve more than one action going through a printing press? Well, if there's four plates, it has to go through four times for each print. So you print one plate, you peel back the paper, you, you mark where the first plate was, take it out, put the second one in, 
the paper goes back down and rolls back through. So you get exact positioning each yeah. time. Um, and so well, you're, you're, what you're doing is a great a great deal of accuracy there to get the, the image back in and, and and absolutely yeah and 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 so it, it's a, it's a, in 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 terms of density dark aquatint over dark aquatint four times you're getting the really sort of succulent dense ink um, where you want it most 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 strong and, and and everything in between that and white is is a matter of controlling removing a bit of color on plate number two and you know what I mean and allowing it to come through on the final plate so those colors are the range of tones from white to black is, uh, is extensive huge. yeah I'm finding I'm finding this is interesting because as my work um, is mostly done on Photoshop anything I've done digitally and that will involve uh, layers Yes. So the layering in a Photoshop image and the layering on a printed image going through a printing press, I'd say there's a little bit of relativity there. Absolutely. Um, there, yeah. And I'm sure that's printmaking is a medium that kind of, um, you know, it, 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 it sits on the border of so many different things, you know. I mean, and I don't mean just technically and physically, but also, you know, it, it's almost it's, it, it's a medium that is... Um, that wanders into, uh, you know, posters for public consumption, um, art for the people, really. But um, but it being printed is, is quite an interesting, uh, and layered, as you say, is an interesting way to develop. I, I'm sorry, exactly what I did in developing my own work, seeing it as um, the more you can control that fluid. And I was when I said to you, I was painting acid on to each of the four plates. I put them all down together and paint painted on now i've offset the first plate onto the sorry the last plate the master plate onto the other three and then mark where where those let's say where the horse figures are i can see it right. and then I, so i know how to bite it i either bite the background and stop out the horses or stop out the background and bite the horses you know in other words object on background and background behind object i can control that and wow. bite, bite them at different times. Yeah. But in painting acid on, you get this very fluid, dense, solid, you know, 100% strength acid and water next to it. The acid runs into the water and, and weakens as it goes in. So you're getting this very human touch. It's not into a bath of acid that's uniform everywhere. You're getting yeah, dark, absolutely. darks and lights it's over a, each other. Fluid. It's an absolutely striking image. Um, yeah, so, like uh, you've um, done oil painting, printing, sculpture. They all feature in your work. Now, out of those disciplines, um, do you have a favorite medium to work with? Um, I wouldn't call myself a sculptor. Um, somebody suggested to me, and again, because of the horses, he said they don't really look like real horses, those horses that you make. They look a bit like three dimensional objects, and they should be three dimensional <laughs> objects. And I thought, oh, I don't know. I've, I have enough trouble with two dimensions, so. Hmm. Uh, uh, but I entered into it and 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 made a number of horses. In fact, probably from the early two thousands to 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 now, um, in bronze. And I have to say, it's very daunting. So I got some help with armatures, just getting the right proportions. But once once I got beyond that, I could I could um, remake them myself uh, in oil based clay first of all, and then um, then. Uh, sometimes in wax, but uh, yeah, it, it, I then, like to. And then from the oil based clay and the wax, would you make like a bronze? You're making bronze, yeah. The, the foundry would make a mold for me and then make a bronze. We might sometimes even work on the bronze and then make another mold and then another, you know, a new okay, horse. So it's a, so you, process, kind of, a process and reprocess, exactly. And oh. um, so the, the, the sculpture came out of the printmaking, came out of those horses. And um, I, I have to sort of, I suppose, go back slightly further than the ilium. Um, I, I, as a young man, I, I grew up in, in Bath Avenue in Sandymount, um, down on the border of Ringsend. My mother's family comes from Ringsend, so we're working class people, in case anyone gets the wrong idea, I'm, I'm a D4 type person. Okay. But, uh, so okay. we, we went to the horse show every summer, myself and my mates, right? And we get over the back wall and we just mess around, basically. Yeah, okay. um, get up to no good. <laughs> but um, it, it's a, in not in the main arena, which we didn't have tickets to get into, in, in the in the warming up arena, which yeah. is like a, it's open to the public. 
and people just wander around. Um, you, you would see these people warming the horses up before going into um, to do their jump, jump, you know, their, their series of jumps. And so David Broom and uh, Harvey Smith and, you know, all those huge show jumping stars, you'd see them close up, like I'm talking about two feet away. Oh, yeah. um, and, and so those impeccably groomed animals, they're much heavier than racehorses. They have a huge sort of uh, physical presence. So yeah, that, from, me, from, I, I was astonished. From um, growing up here in rural Ireland, um, yeah. Um, having access to land and stuff like that, um, yeah. I've worked with farmers uh, as a um, as a team, and uh -huh. one of those farmers had horses, and you do appreciate the the power within a horse, especially yeah, it, especially when it steps on your foot. <laughs> I'm sure you. I'm sure you would. Or, 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 yeah. or knock you yeah. over. Yes. I mean, the, yeah. the strength and power is way beyond our own physically. Yeah. But um, I, I the the, the the feeling of, of, of a person, uh, what's it called? Because they would be turning. I'd always stand at the corner. They'd come and turn, and you hear the heavy breathing as he's getting it, as your man is pulling the reins back to try to pace him, to turn at the right uh, at the right point, at the right speed, so as he can gather momentum for the next jump. But um, it was just astonishing to watch for me that the symbiosis, that, that physically the rider is trying to... Oh, to move the horse as exactly as he wants him so they are becoming one in some way so have, have you ever have you ever been on horseback once oh, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't go too well <laughs> and, and how did you find the experience I, I, i'm fine i wasn't disappointed by it but i just thought there's too much to learn here i can't do it i, I have too much else going on in my life um <laughs> no I, I was never that that drawn to it but um it brings uh, yeah. me back to my, one, one of my old memories that the first time I was on a horse was in, in Kerry going through the, the, the uh, one of the gaps down there that they yeah. have the tours going and uh, there was a shortage on good horses and yeah. the guy asked me have you been have you been around horses before I said yeah but I've never really ridden on it he said sure you'll be yeah. okay with this one and he gave me the wildest horse he oh, could God. find and uh it, it reacted with a JCB that was nearby and it, it reared up oh, <laughs> on its back legs and I still managed to stay on and yeah. you have to tell the tale. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, That's, I mean, it's really pretty scary. It. Yeah. I, I, say it was pretty scary, you know, it? I found it to be fun, but um, yeah. I, I doubt yeah. if anyone, yeah, um, many people would find that same. Um, no. No, it sounds pretty. I mean, anything could happen. Falling from that height, it's not. Being at your artist talk, and you were talking about a, a supernatural story of an, an experience you had in Sweden at a guest yeah. house, and um, yeah. there was a new, uh, interesting newspaper headline that emerged from it. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I go back. I'm actually going back there in January in a few weeks' time to work uh, okay. again. And so I go, I, well, before COVID, I, I used to go once or twice a year, at least twice, and work there. Uh, I always enjoy it. Um, it's, it's peaceful, and it's a beautiful setting. It's in the middle of a forest, uh, away from the city, you know, um, in the countryside. So, uh, and it's a very nice, um, it's an art centre. So I can paint and I can print as well. It's um, like a residency then, uh, Stephen. Um, yes and no. It's, it, it is a residency, yes. But they don't advertise it. They don't, um, you know, they don't. It's it's not a. It's not. Um, uh, they have two or three different exhibition spaces, and and they you can print etchings or silk screens as well. And I I think most of the people that go there are Swedish. They have a few outside people like myself who are, have become sort of family members nearly. But um, yeah, so so it is a residency. Yes, you could say that. Um, but yeah, so I was there. It's quite a long after the actual event. Like a few years after the event, one of the family who runs the, the they have a cafe restaurant, you know, and gallery uh, space. She said, I have a friend from the um, newspaper in North Shipping. He wants to talk to you. I said, yeah, OK, whatever. So she said about the, the ghost, you know, I said, yeah, OK. So mm -hmm. he, he, he came the following day. She said, he doesn't say much. He's kind of quiet. I said, oh, all right, I can answer his questions anyway. His English isn't great, she said, but I'll be there. I said, okay. He started to ask me um, about the, you know, about the, the, 
seeing what I saw, my experience. And and do I need do I, should I tell you that quickly? Yeah, for your, sure. Yeah. So so I was in in on the, my first residency, our second one there, and I'd gone the the we had an opening the following morning. So the Irish ambassador was up there to open it. Um. So so after the opening, we would have had you know a meal and some drinks and whatever. But the night before. Anders, who's the director, said, we, we'll have some schnapps. I said, no, Anders, come on. After the opening, we can have a bit of a party. I said, I'm really tired. I traveled from Ireland that, that day. Mm. Uh, it was minus 19. Snow, about a meter high snow all around. But, um, you know, except on the roadways. So I said, and he was disappointed, but I went back to bed early. And they put us in this old manor house, 16th century wooden building. Now, the basement is, is stone and the the uh, you know the, the foundations and basement are stone and then the wooden structures built on top but um it, it had been refurbished it's beautiful really to a high level so anyway i was going to sleep and had turned the light off and saw these swirling circles of smoke at the end of my bed and i didn't know what they were they were glowing because I, I i switched off the light i could still hear the landlady talking to two people downstairs all the way through this so i kind of that's why i knew i wasn't mm. sleeping I, w- I was still connected to the real yeah. world, you know? So, okay. um, um, yeah, and I, I remember looking at those circles and thinking, what the hell are they? And then I looked at, I just kept staring at them and then two smaller ones formed around them and then a bigger one around the outside. So I kind of knew what I thought originally were big eyes it turned out to be cheekbones. They were, they were you know, just a f- like somebody drawing a figure almost in smoke. Oh, and so cool. in glowing smoke, so then kind of nose, ears, hair, mouth, eyes, mm. neck, shoulders, all, all slowly started to form um, in this swirling. So a, a smoky spectral image. Then. Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. Like, like you'd seen, you know, uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, um, so, so she's, at once, once I realised, and it took me, had to be a couple of minutes to think, Jesus, it's a woman. Because I didn't know what it was. I, I thought it was just a jumble of, of uh, you know, forming you know shapes forming yeah. and because and, they were all moving around each other and then slowly this thing full figure emerged and i thought it's a human first of all it's human then thought, it's a woman so she yeah. lunged at me with her teeth snarling and, and i lashed out with my foot yeah. and, and it disappeared yeah. and so i searched under the bed i opened the wardrobe and i could open the door to my room all room doors in sweden open outwards i don't know why but anyway i opened the door and i could still hear the landlady talking to two English artists who were coming in. And yeah. so it kind of freaks you out. I was freaked out. But I think I lay down. I didn't feel any bad feeling in the room. Didn't feel negative or cold or, you know, scary. Yeah. So I thought, well, OK, that, that was very strange. And I went to sleep. So, okay. I woke up the so it didn't bother you too much. You well, it did bother straight. me. But, but I thought, yeah, because I had I had told them how tough I was before I went to bed. Because yeah. Anders had said, which room are you staying in? I said, well, the one at the top of the stairs. Oh, that's the. You shouldn't be staying in that room. <laughs> I said, yeah, <laughs> "Give me a break, will you?" I said, "I'm from Ring's End," uh, so, so I was all, you know, yeah. What's the word? You know, um, feeling, Change. yeah, no, feeling, yeah. feeling, feeling tough. You know, nothing can affect me. However, yeah. it certainly did affect me, and it's only afterwards when your brain has time to catch up with with itself, because what yeah. your, your brain is telling you when you see something like that. I, this is not this real. Isn't real. This can't be real. This this yeah. is like you know, it's like seeing something elevating or God knows what, a spaceship maybe. But anyway, so he came to interview me, and I told him exactly that story. And he yeah. said to me, "Yes, yes, yes, Mr. Lowry." He said, "So where did you kick the woman?" <laughs> well, I said, "I don't know." I said, "I was lying down. She attacked me. She was standing up, hmm. and said so she came t- towards me." And he said, "Around the middle of the body." I said, "Well, somewhere there, yeah. The groin, would you say?" I said, well, I don't know in the groin. Yes, perhaps in the groin. I don't know. So he <laughs> he off he went. And it was only a few days later, one of my friends came in with the newspaper. They were all laughing and put it on the on the on the table. And I said, What? What? It's in Swedish. I can't understand it. So they said, This says here, Irish artist kicks Swedish woman in the groin in her own head. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh crap. Because I just thought. Well, I had to laugh, though, you know, because yeah. he was... Well, you know what to say? There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> he's, looking for a, he's looking for a good headline to please his boss, I suppose. And it's as good as any. But, um, yeah, it, it changed my... I think I read your, your question there. It changed my attitude to work 
to what I was making. And I started looking at women specifically in period costumes and then women from the past, powerful women or, or not so powerful women um, from the pantheon of Western painting. And so you start to sort of, let's say, latch on to or investigate, explore people like Madame de Pompidou or Elizabeth I or, you know, and, and, and try and figure out how they, how they negotiated their time as women, because certainly it wasn't easy for them. Um, and I, I mean, I'm the wrong person to be, to be talking about that because I don't have that much affinity. I'm sort of a, uh, well, I'm a man, first of all, but, but secondly, in the, previously it had not interested me that much. But after that, it certainly did. Well, for for you, like the that uh, apparition as such wasn't real. So, did, can you connect with something that's not real, uh, other yeah. than that your reaction is to push it away? So, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, to push it, you, you yeah. mean physically when it happened? Pardon? You mean push it away physically when it happened? When, when yeah, I saw it? Exactly. Well, no. If she if she'd stayed where she was, I I, I would have done nothing. No, no, no you would have been more. Yeah, you would have been more appreciative of her, of her presence. <laughs> exactly, and so for some reason she didn't want me there. Um, but I did meet a medium. A woman came again a year after that. A woman came to interview me from uh, Vosteros, another big town, other direction, um, and she said. Uh, to Anders, she said, oh, Anders introduced us and said, she wants to talk to you about your exhibition. I had an exhibition at that time of, of, of women, believe it or not, paintings of women, prints of women. And uh, some of them semi-real, some of them, you know, you, realistic, quite quite figurative. So, so you could say that the, the, ex, uh, the experience changed your, um, your practice in a way. Uh, uh, absolutely. And, and I said to her, she said, so you saw this woman in that house over there. I said, yeah, I said, but I said, I could tell you, I said, he doesn't believe me. So there's no point me telling you about it. Because at that time, early on, certainly, if I told that story, you get mixed reactions. And some of them are yeah. quite, people laugh, people laugh at you. So you just don't tell them <laughs> too often. Yeah. So, but this woman turned out to be a medium and as well as, as well as an art critic. So she told me that, um, she said, don't be worried about it. She said, and I said, why would she, what did I do to her to make her attack me? And she said, well, nothing. She said, you know, uh, it takes a massive amount of energy for her to form like that. Yeah. Now I said, well, so, so, I don't really understand that. What, what does that mean? Well, she said, the spirits don't have the you know, ability to make themselves just visible, just like that. It takes, they have to use energy to do it. And they either have to store it up or take it from somewhere else. She said, then perhaps you yourself are a medium and you don't even know it. I said, well, I don't, I don't know. And she said, well, sometimes I know somebody else who stayed in the same room, you see, a friend of mine who yeah. is quite curmudgeonly and, and uh, he, nothing appeared to him. He was disappointed, but yeah. um, I would have preferred nothing appeared to me. But um, she said, look, if she appeared to you and did that, she yeah. has a reason to do that. And look at this exhibition, you know, 50 pieces of art and sculpture too, all based on women. Yeah. Isn't that something? It is something it's yeah, well, to tell you. So uh, definitely uh, an experience, a, a life changing experience. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, so um, in your opinion, then, Stephen, uh, what would you think uh, would make a successful image, but not in terms of sale or fame or anything, but just to satisfy your own creative um, spirit itself. Oh, it. well, um, I, 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 yeah, I looked at that question too. It's an interesting question. And, and I don't know why, but when you look at a piece of art you've made in the past, sometimes, I mean, it goes on day to day. If, if you're, I don't like the word practice, but for all yeah. intents and purposes, that's what it is. So you come in the next morning thinking, great, I really, what I made yesterday was just fantastic. I was on a roll. And you look at it and you go, oh my God, it's terrible. Yeah. Or, or the reverse could yeah. happen where yeah. you, there is where a point supposed, where, yeah. where some images, uh, they say, have to pass through an ugly stage before they get be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess there's, 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 there's an element of that in it as well, because I know of uh, artists who, who look at their work and go, oh, my God, what was I thinking at the time when I made that? <laughs> exactly. But, but, but the reverse is true as well. So you have to be kind to yourself. And, you know, you look at something you thought was terrible and you, I, I wouldn't let it out if it was terrible. I thought it was terrible. Okay, so there's a certain point or level of, of 
competence or you know quality where you're gonna I, I know artists who let things go too quickly I think but um you know sometimes and as it happens occasionally when you see when you make an image and I don't know what it is it's about the the composition obviously the the tonality the color the darkness the light and all those things combined that that tell you and I like it's been said to me before and I like to think this is true that um the images that I make I make them to last so when you look at them you think oh that's interesting and you look a bit longer and you see something else and you think oh and so it's almost like some sort of spiritual effect it has on you the more the longer you look at it the better it gets and if you revisit it the next day or the next week if it's on your wall at home you know it, it doesn't fade because so, so there's quite a lot of visual art that you could you know you'd see around that on, on initial impact looks interesting and promising and bold but on 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 sustained uh looking doesn't hold up to it you know so yeah I, it's been said to me that my work requires a bit of looking what you've just said has uh, has brought a, a a lesson back from um from my um degree show or from from my degree sorry that mm. um Ronan Bat has had a thing about uh, uh, an image having a punction, and uh, that punction is 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 what impacts the people when you see it, and mm. it, it's more it's more about um, how one person can view an image and how uh, how it affects them and how another person would view it and it wouldn't have that effect on them. So it's, it's a very interesting take on it. So. Um, I Absolutely. Guess what I'm trying to, I'm, I'm lost for a word now. <laughs> um, what I'm trying well, to is say there, is, there, is, is there yeah, some yeah. sort of is there some sort of unison then between the artist and and those that do connect with the piece of art that they're making? Do you know what I mean? Is there is there something in common between those two, yeah. um, but not with the people who can't sort of engage or relate to it? That's uh, yeah, maybe so, and maybe even even your relatives might like your work more than than a stranger would work because they know what you're about and, and might know a little bit more history about yeah. what you've done to do this and, uh, and how that makes them feel then would be different as well yeah yeah I, i'm not saying i mean sometimes it's funny it's funny how art is viewed i mean when an artist you know the big names when a really really well established sort of superstar art superstar reaches a certain level suddenly everything they make is good they can do no yeah. wrong so, yeah. so so again it's it's not only perception it's, it's preconception as it were um how people view a person who's you know who's made it to a certain point and therefore they must be wonderful so um i don't know i, I think every all of it is relevant and all of it is true something graphically powerful and strong if it if it arrests you and and, and you see you think it's great it, if that there's nothing wrong with that, and if it, if the same thing works on other levels, and it it can be so, then then you've got something very special. And uh, I don't know. I've made I don't know a few things, a few pieces over the years that I I, I love to look at again. Quite a lot of them I <laughs> know. <laughs> I guess the word I was looking for was sub subjective, subjective. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there yeah. you go. Well, thanks very much, Stephen. That was really nice talking to you and a very in insightful interview. And as not not well, I hope so. I hope so. And, uh, thank very you much for so. your interest, Alan. Yeah. Uh, thank you very uh, much.